So this is the actual TF2 map I've been working on. The issue is I can't load that part of spawn because it will crash my client. Um, but this is uh, the redstone for it so far. Uh, actually, uh, so there's been a lot of redstone done for it, but I deleted a lot of it. I think part of what I deleted created a spawner, but I'll get to that later. But for now, I want to show off the map itself before spawn crashes my me. Um, I think I'm good though. I'd actually, if I go onto the opposite side of spawn, is when it starts to crash me. If I'm on that corner, I seem to be fine. But yeah, flying along here, 500 blocks uh, to the map itself. It's 500 blocks away from spawn, which is pretty customary of maps now. Uh, just how maps work. Uh, they have all the redstone and spawn chunks and build the map itself without any redstone in it. And this would be the quote unquote spawn platform that all the players stand on uh, while they were readying up and forming teams and all that. Over here is the spawn tunnels. That's just redstone testing. But these are the spawn tunnels. It's, uh, in TF2 there are spawn timers. But you can't quite do that in Minecraft, so I have a spawn tunnel instead that would, depending on your progress of the map, uh, put you further away or f closer to the actual portal. And there's a few things going on. Uh, generally in TF2, uh, it favors the attacker's spawn time. Those beams of light are red, that's cool. So if you have four points and the defenders are trying to save one point, the attackers will have a quicker respawn time than the defenders, to, to, just to make sure that it doesn't stalemate infinitely. Uh, they want the attackers to have the advantage. So like the attackers, if you're trying to capture the final point, will spawn here. Uh, or like if they're capturing the final point, they'll spawn here. If they only had the fourth point, they'll spawn here. If they're capturing the fourth point, they'll spawn here, and so on and so forth to the end. And here, these pads would be the uh, item spawners. Like, you will spawn with no inventory, you run over here. I actually want to show this off. But, like, there'll, there'll be a stack of armor here, a bow, sword, food, and pick here. You run over both of them, you'll right click your armor on, and then enter the water, and that will portal you to your spawn on the map. And the spawn on the map actually is different depending on how many points you have captured. Uh, if you have four points captured, you have a forward spawn. I mean, like if you have three, three and four points captured, you have a forward spawn. So you're not running back all the way from your base trying to capture their base. Your, help, your spawn is actually in an asteroid. That way you only have to run this far instead of all this to get to here. So yeah, the, the five points are... Uh, in the void, flying over the air. Uh, both teams spawn over this point. Uh, this is your final point that you have to defend. Uh, and then you just kind of roam the area. These these used to teleport me to the old red sun at spawn, so I'm not gonna take those. But I'm actually lagging out. For some, like my client's been doing that. Sometimes it just wants to drop below 30 FPS, but um, well, that might be my recording. I don't know, but yeah, this is all stained glass, uh, all new blocks in the 1.7. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, so there are these item spawners on the ground, and unlike TF2, where you just have your class items, in this you will have these item spawners and. You run over them, and occasionally, like every 10 seconds, it will spawn a new speed 2 potion. Uh, this one will spawn speed 2. So you run over it, get speed 2, and you have speed 2 for a little bit. And other spawners have better swords, a better armor, a better bow, or one use wooden tools, which is another thing. Or one of them has a flint and steel that's two uses. And what you do with the flint and steel is uh, you could blow this up. And I've tested this so it blows up the staircase perfectly. Uh, and then you'll hit that one. And then it blows up another part perfectly. This area. 
and then you just do this two more times. Perfect explosions, except this still kind of kind of clips that. And two more explosions through a staircase. Full, ooh, that kind of went forward too, but like it properly explodes this, so you can jump up here and be able to go up. Unfortunately, adventure mode, as this was originally intended to play in, has changed to be able to not place and break any blocks at all. So, <coughs> maybe on my on the sword, I have to be able to give it the ability to break glass as intended. But you should like an alternative route into the final point would be to come up here and come in from above to capture it that way. As well as like multiple routes, you can climb these trees to climb onto this walkway that you could sneak into here. Uh, there is this attack point up here that you could bow in from. There's a little cave system. I oh, know there's this cave system that comes up to that point from below here, as these player heads aren't loaded properly. As well as a sewer, like a, another key system over here that leads straight into the point, pretty much. As well as just like multiple routes everywhere. Second point uh, is a tree stump. Uh, like on top of this tree stump, there's the second point here. And the midpoint, like this part is all forest themed with like houses with supplies on top and uh, grapevines, the, they call this house the grape house or something. And the midpoint is an asteroid type barrier, uh, war zone. A rocket ship has crash landed here, two asteroids. This is the forward spawn. Uh, if your team has four points, you'll spawn here. And then the arrowheads, which are new, uh, Mojang added these, so I can know that there will always be arrowheads. We'll be pointing this way uh, towards their final point, just direct the player. But like the midpoint, it's actually kind of a weird design. But, like this whole part of your left hand side is a staircase, and your whole right side is a wall. Uh, you could climb the wall by doing some jumps and stuff, but or you could just run up the staircase that you have this whole area to roam. And then you can test the middle point. And this map is likely to see the light of day. Uh, I'll need to do the control point logic, which is mostly uh, decently completed. You actually, uh, where? Viewpoint dummy, I think is this one right here. No, it's something at spawn. I changed the coordinates to spawn just to quick, quickly test it instead of teleporting back and forth. But like each point, you stand on it, a clock runs, and then the idea is if I'm blue team and I'm capturing this point, the carpets will slowly change to blue under my feet. And then once all nine carpets are captured, these four wool change to blue. And then it would say in chat that blue team has captured fourth point. And then the points contest between this point, which red has to capture back, and this point, which blue has to capture. And then the other three points are actually uh, blues, and red can't capture either of those. Like those that would have no effect standing on those. These are the only two points that would do anything. So yeah, the biggest problem with this is that in the original versions, I included, I believe this is the bug, but I included a bunch of different parts of other people's redstone for spawn and lobby logic. And what that has done is just created, I deleted it all. But there's like a spawner entity still in spawn chunks that that when I try to render it, it crashes my client. And uh, 
Yeah, so that makes spawn chunks pretty unusable, and it makes this map pretty laggy. Like sometimes when I'm doing redstone, I'll start to get block lag in single player because of weird. I don't even know what's up. It's not the clocks itself. It's something. I don't know. It's this weird bug that's hindering the redstone on this map. And even though I deleted the chunk that the crash report says that that crazy glitched out spawner entity is at, it's like a falling sand of a spawner. That's what's crashing me. But I deleted the chunks entirely. I pruned the chunks in MC Edit. But that entity is still there for some reason, even though the chunk itself is completely dead and gone. I don't even know. I don't know how to fix that beyond taking all these blocks and copying them into a new world and going from there. But regardless, that's just, I don't know, it's kind of um, inspiration numbing, makes me not want to keep working on this. Maybe making this video will help me want to proceed this map because it's actually fairly close to being done. Like all the map itself is built and ready for testing and the redstone logic is was originally done but a lot of it was redstone dust based and I'm moving on from that. So I want to just get a very rough redstone and get actually being played and tested and see how it plays but for now I mean, I'm having to deal with Minecraft bugs and that's just not fun to try to even deal with. So yeah, on to the next map I think. Alright, so as you can see in chat, I am on the map dev server of Overcast Network and these, this is where the final three maps are. I've taken you through 16 maps I believe and this is map 17. And the rest of the three are on the same world, actually. There's one right there and one over there. But there's three maps left to show you. And the first one is actually a race for wool. And this is actually the race for wool that's more likely to see the completion than the Big Rock Candy Mountain one I showed you before. Uh, the spawn drop is a customary water drop that actually help forces the player forward and gets them actually rolling ahead. And then the beginning of the map is actually a huge water drop down uh, into the map itself. And then the first point of contention is this void, void here. And this is the void lane in the middle. So I'm looking at from like the other mirror would be right here. So keep that in mind. But the void would be right here. Uh, the goal of each team is to be the bridge across here. But in this void it would actually be a city um, yeah uh, it won't be a plain void gap to try to cross or a cliff to try to cross into the other map that would mean that the first team across has a significant advantage over the other like direct fire but this would actually be a wool down here um, so yeah it would be like a village with a ton of supplies and a wool I don't think the wool would be in like the little pit, maybe like somewhere else, but like the first wool would be in this area, I think. Uh, the main problem with this map is that only two wools were really designed. Um, like it would be, a, like only two wools have a dedicated area for them. The third wool um, wasn't quite finished, but this area would be like a resource area and there would be alternative ways to bridge across this void if you wanted to, maybe even like a dedicated bridge down here if you needed to get across that badly. Uh, so it's not just the, if your team gets stuck here versus an, a good archer or two, it's not end all be all. You have options to actually succeed, try to succeed and try to move on past them. So it's not crazy. And it's also a pretty short void too. Um, but up here would be the monuments. Uh, on this mountain, and I wanted, to, I like this feel of splitting the lane into two. The front half being short, the back half being a mountain. Uh, so you kind of have like a narrower lane, uh, but like the mountains up there. And this would be the entrance to the second wool, if the first wool's in there. This is definitely a wool. 
you'll go down here and there'll be a button into the wall itself or maybe a main entrance I'm not sure but you'll be teleported into a sort of grid maze sort of thing where kind of drawing this out impromptu but there'll be a 4x4 four four grid of rooms and they give them as separate rooms that you can't access normally so you can't just walk from this room to this room the conditions for going from this room subsiding into the red wool would be it has to be daytime so it has to be daytime to move right that is and if it's nighttime, you can move left. And then to move down has to be raining, to move up has to be sunny. That's what I was thinking for this area. Probably will change upon testing, but the idea is they can only move room to room depending on the weather condition and the time of day. And so, like, the wool itself would be here, and you enter up here. So, you have to work your way to the wool room by having it daytime and raining or whatever and work yourself back by being at nighttime and sunny or like nighttime and clear weather nighttime and sunny yeah <laughs> so you have to kind of work with your team to make sure that happens and instead of relying on the weather and rely waiting for the sun to set there would be a temple on this mountain that or like two temples a temple a temple on this mountain would change the weather and another temple somewhere else would change the time of day. Maybe that lava would be a good place for the time of day temple. To turn it to night or to turn it to day based on the sacrifice of some sort to the gods or whatever you want to call them. But uh, yeah, like maybe like logs or something or gravel that I could only get on certain parts of the map and not much of. And then maybe a cool down time or two so you can't just swap it continuously. Uh, or the two teams can't swap it continuously or something but uh, that's sort of that's sort of gameplay for the uh, second PvP wall uh, moving ahead to the third wall we run into Mr. Swirlin's wild ride this is actually a promise to uh, Swirlin that I would build a race for wool in my neck uh, build a roller coaster in my next race for wool map and so on stream I built this with Swirlin watching and yeah, th this promise will definitely happen in my next race will I release. There will be a roller coaster, and it'll be named after Swirlin, uh, race for wool guy, a uh, good friend that I've talked to many times and uh, played a lot of Twilight together with with a lot of other people. And uh, in an OCTC match on Parallax, uh, it's kind of a joke map to me. You know, other people play it seriously, but on that map I played to build a roller coaster and on that map Swirlin was with me and he's like I like this roller coaster and so I was like okay I'll build one for my next race wool so yeah that's gonna happen uh, riding this ride uh, it's named after a uh, joke uh, Mr. Bones Wild Ride and Roller Coaster Tycoon is a joke where the roller coaster lasts literally five years for the uh, NPCs in the game not for you but it's so long that it never ends for the uh, characters and at, but at the joke image uh, has every single NPC in the amusement park going I want to get off Mr. Bones Wild Ride I want to get off Mr. Bones Wild Ride it's a pretty funny uh, image but this is the named after that Mr. Swirlin's Wild Ride and what would happen is Uh, if you complete this ride, running it normally, uh, there might be like command blocks or spawners or something that spawn in sequence. So if you get to each of these points in order, um, it will give you a certain item of some value. Let's push myself forward. You could do that, by the way. You use your arrow keys to direct minecart so that I stopped without having to push them themselves. But yeah, and then you reach the end of the track and uh, get your reward. Maybe. That seems kind of hard to actually accomplish, but it's certainly possible. I'm uh, moving ahead, though. We have a little barn, a wheat farm, another split 
between a mountain and a valley, a uh, wheat farm with scarecrows, the temple will definitely be here, and there's also a moose. <laughs> this moose is named Diamond Axe, by the way. And this No, this moose is named Diamond, and the sand camel is named Axe. Uh, because Diamond Axe is working on another map on this server, as w with Tiggy Lee, and what, like we were, me and three mainly were doing was going around the map and building these uh, moose, uh, mooses, meese, whatever the plural is, using stairs, slabs, and fences for the antlers. <laughs> And so it's like a winter themed map, uh, or like a uh, pine forest mountain themed area. It's, it's a snow lift, basically, a uh, skiing atmosphere. So we're just building these uh, moose all, mooses all around. And I built a sand camel beneath a bridge. Uh, there's another camel here. It's like, sa like sandstone stair camel. Uh, and like that sand camel just. <laughs> uh, it's it's an inside joke, but there's gonna be a flock of moose on top of this mountain here. Basically, long story short. And here is actually third wool, which is actually all underground, and it's a large PVE wool. Um, this area will be dark. There will be like a bedrock ceiling in the void to make this fully dark during day, and it's just this huge drop. Uh, into like a jungle slash nether brick sort of atmosphere, dark, very mob heavy, and then like a huge temple in here with the wool in this area. So a significantly large PVE area that's more open than most face of wool PVE. That's an, it's normally in like a cave of mob spawners. This would be more open, especially to PVP fire. Uh, you could cannon parts of this that are valuable to the player, which I'll make some parts valuable, and work from there. Uh, so yeah, this race for wool only has two wool, dead like two confirmed wool, the PVE and the PVP uh, variable dungeon dungeon crawler type of wool, and then the first wool doesn't have any room. But that's the issue with that, but uh, they'll probably might see some light eventually, some work on it. Uh, the other two maps on this server, uh, I'm not going to have transitions between the maps anymore, but uh, you can see more sand camels and moose east. Uh, but this is meant to be a TDM. Uh, these are actually OCTC maps, because uh, this is the OCTC map dev server. Uh, and. By that I mean Overcast Network, for those unfamiliar, it's a PvP server that receives a lot of a lot of traffic, and uh, I'm on a race, uh, Overcast Network team in the tournament uh, called Orbit, and but basically this is a uh, and Diamond X, the person I'm talking about, it's on that team as well as a bunch of others, but. This is meant to be a start of a TDM, Team Deathmatch, where your goal was to just kill, get more points than the other team by killing them in 10, 15 minutes or so, all depending. But the difference between this and other TDMs is that it's 90 degrees rotated. So that's your spawn, this is their spawn, and you clash in the middle at a diagonal. Uh, and I really like this, uh, sort of plan for map like most rotated map like most symmetrical maps are either rotated 180 degrees or mirrored 180 degrees and this is more like rotated slash mirror 90 degrees across a symmetrical line that's diagonal compared to the map itself a map itself instead of straight with the blocks It'll be a diagonal symmetry, and I don't know. I think that'd be kind of cool. Although this map itself probably won't see much light. It's a bit. I know it's it's stained clay guided guidelines, and like I said before, stained clay kind of feels weird. It feels too smooth and too candy-ish. 
Um, so yeah, that's. I know the map will probably change from its stained clay. There's also some caves inside that will be mirrored as well inside this mountain, just to give some teams some options. Options, although generally I don't like TDM that much because most of them you can't break or place blocks, and that removes a lot of what Minecraft PvP is good about. Uh, so I don't really like TDM all that much, and the ones the TDM maps that allow you to break and place blocks are actually problematic because teams can get a clear advantage when like win the first encounter ten to four or whatever. I completely wipe the other team and then go back to the spawn and then hide um, and that actually happened to us and we lost that way because they could break blocks and tunnel and then all hide in this very compact area it's impossible to really clear them out of and nah I don't like team that much but CTW capture the wool so I capture the flag and it's this other map over here untitled map number two for OCTC and with this map, I actually wanted to do something different. Uh, it's actually a tournament uh, contest, a map, CTW map making contest recently, where you had to take a two lane CTW. By two lane, it's actually meant to be a, um, like the standard two lane CTW is Race for Victory 2. And it basically means there's two wolves. And both of those wolves are in distinct lanes from each other. And then there's a spawn where you could go on the left lane or the right lane, depending on the wool that you're focusing on or what type of offense you're trying to do. But with this CTW, I wanted to uh, bring the islands back in from Golden Drought, like Golden Drought inspired islands, island hopping from uh, lane to lane. But the two lanes themselves are different. Um, it's kind of glassed up and it's kind of weird to see now. But uh, the two differences are that the right lane on both teams would be a staircase up to a tower of some sorts. And this tower on the other lane, your left lane, is the flat ground to this tower. So like if you're this team, what you're looking at is the tower on their, uh, that they have easy, easier access to and the ramp that you could go climb up to your own tower on their side. So this tower is, has a significant height advantage over your opponent and from here you could sky bridge uh, from this tower over their lane to this wall and you could do the same on their lane and then the more challenging wall is the opposite lane. So like this, like this will be easier than that wall, basically. Uh, from what I like predict, and then you have to try to bridge to here, and then I like, get over. You have a more easier time getting over the defenses on this side than this side. Uh, although I did leave the, I think I'm not sure about this, but I think I'm leaving the option to bridge across behind their spawn from this wall to that wall to kind of negate how difficult that wall might be uh, but uh, yeah so this is just like a work in progress capture the wall a lot of lot of stuff to it like before these island, these staircases were a lot thicker and I've been kind of working on trimming down their size to something more thinner that way they could have more options to like navigate this part and then the middle part is just brand new I worked did this yesterday where it's just a huge flat area now where it's just like a contest area where you have your own staircase on this side and you have their staircase on this side it's not properly mirrored at the moment but it could just a way to con contest the middle area and give it some importance itself I'm not sure if this will stand out, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It needs a lot of work, and this map needs a lot of work, but I don't know, I kind of want to actually work on it. 
I didn't make the contest tonight, so it's not for the contest, obviously, but, uh, I don't know. I kind of like where this map is headed, even though it, it still needs a lot more direction to it still. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of just casual building in this, on the off time. So yeah, that's map number 19, though. Uh, 19 and 19 uncompleted maps, so time to end this video off All right, so I'm on my uh, Home screen now to thank you for watching this video if you managed to reach this far I know this is a very long video, but I wanted to do this for a long time just to showcase all the maps that one I never completed two uh, Updates of maps that are completed but the updates themselves are not have issues, the bugs to try to deal with. And three, the types of maps I'm currently still working on that actually have good chances to see the light of day and the ability to be possibly even be played somewhat soon. Uh, if those if that does happen, you'll see trailers and proper releases for those types of maps, of course, but for now I'm still working on them. Uh, so thank you for reaching this far in the video though, I will say that again because it's, it's a really long one, uh, kind of a sore throat even now too, but, uh, yeah, those are all the maps I've never completed, never properly finished, all that sorts of stuff that I just explained, and I just wanted to showcase that that's how I've been map making, uh, why you might not have seen many maps since Hidden Redemption and Slippery Slope was really Slippery Slope and then last year I did complete Cake Wars 3 with Gamma Ray that you could play on OCTC's Blitz servers actually actually it's in rotations and I really like Cake Wars 3 and Cake Wars 1 too those are good classics and huge shout out to Gamma Ray for those but uh, yeah you got to see all the maps that were completed all the concepts, all the, uh, I don't know the term off the top of my head, but, uh, it's like a concept trial, proof of concept, like, pro yeah, proof of concept, I think is the term, but it's all the proof of concepts of Super Mario Galaxy to Ocarina of Time remixes to first CTMs I've built to all the PvP stuff I've been doing more recently. Uh, yeah. I just, at the end of this, I just want to wrap this up now. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. And, bye. Bye, y'all. Try out the new video.